Language establishes character. Composer John Williams takes a short course in Ewok ease from Ben Burt, who invented all the Star Wars dialects. The pitch is sort of midget like. Isn't it? Also, if the voice is going to be sped up a little bit or raised in pitch the way these have been, if you start out with, an, I say, an average human voice, mine or Jim Bloom, and you raise it in pitch, it tends to sound a little like Chip and Dale. But it's, it's easier to get a foreign language and to have someone speak it and make it come across as a real language than just to make one up. Because when you make one up, it tends to sound like English, just rearranged pig line. Yeah. Right. It tends to be a pig line. So what we've done in the past is really just take interesting words and use them. Sometimes, sometimes mix Swahili with uh, Chinese or something. I mean, there's, there's no attempt to make it literal. Backwards sometimes. Backwards is a limited thing because things are generally can be identified as backwards. Right, right, These are voices that we've recorded and stuff, and uh, it, as if they were just you're in the forest and you suddenly go into the Ewok village and you're just trucking through it. And you hear what they're doing. The Ewok environment was composed of this matte painting a California forest, and this studio set in London. Hey. get him louder on that. So then the yeah. next guy says, more firewood. Okay. I look to Mark and say, well, that didn't do us very much good. I say, Th but these are my friends. 3PO, tell, uh, tell them. They must be set free. Then move. 3PO, tell them if, if they don't do as you wish, you'll become angry and use your magic. Uh, no, you, Master Luke, what magic? I couldn't possibly. Tell them. Uh, you want it's not going to work as a joke. Unless we both say exactly the same thing. Okay, what do you and want to say? The exact same Tell pace. them or just... Tell them. Let's both do it carefully. Okay. Tell them. Oh, can I do it too? No. Okay. <laughs> right through the end of the whole oh, great. movie. Really. So you put the down putting to down to later. Yes. Next, actually. Next. And then the levitation. And then the undoing. Okay. Right, the actors, step in, please. Have a rehearsal, Bill. 25 feet 7. You sort of realize that these would be good allies. Uh -huh. So what you're going to do is make them allies. Uh -huh. that's that's so you're cool. just going to sort of play along, right. wait until your moment, and then you're going to... It's very telling that I let them take my weapons. Yeah. That, that it, there's a moment there where I could either strike out or, or you could kill relax. Them all. Well, you got yeah. a sense of the future. you got uh -huh. a sense of yeah. the fact that it's these little funny teddy bears that could destroy the empire. Uh -huh. you know, it's always in a fairy tale. Huh? It's oh. always been nice little bunny rabbit on the side of the road that gives you the magic that makes you go and get uh -huh. the princess from the evil witch. The Ewoks are a variation on a concept that was part of George's vision of Star Wars from the beginning. In the original screenplay, it was a society of Wookiees who, who uh, had this giant ground battle with the Empire at the end of the film and also a space battle. And they were trained to fly ships and uh, they were able to take over uh, the empire. Well, in, in the evolution of the script, I realized I couldn't do this giant battle. When I came to the third film, and the battle was back in again, and I could actually do the battle, uh, I couldn't use Wookiees, because I had established Chewbacca as being a relatively sophisticated creature. He could fly spaceships, runs around. He's not, he's not the primitive that he was in the original screenplay. So I had to develop a new kind of Wookiee, or a new kind of creature, that was primitive, a new primitive society. So what I decided to do was, since they were a, the underdog, so to speak, what I'd do is, instead of making them incredibly tall the way Wookiees are, I'd make them incredibly short. And uh, at the same time, to make them look different from Wookiees, I'd give them short fur instead of long fur. That's really where the Ewok evolved. There is one that's sort of right over there. Uh -huh. Uh, you should look at the ones we've done. We've very carefully brought all this down and across here and there. Otherwise, it looks like flesh, and that all begins to merge. It looks like a human face. Ewoks getting ready to rise. 
This is the last live action sequence shot for the saga. Okay, we're gonna keep you 12 here. We're gonna okay. spread you out through the bushes and you come into this position. <laughs> The Ewok battle uh, was one of the main uh, inspirations for the whole project when I first started Star Wars, and it evolved out of my interest in a project I'd been working on uh, at the time about the Vietnam War. And uh, one of the more fascinating aspects of that project was the human spirit, the human element, uh, being able to withstand an onslaught of of uh, uh, high technology, and, and how the high technology had failed. To win their war against the Empire, the Ewoks had to recruit allies among the special effects people. Appropriately, most of their work was with miniatures. In the first film, we took special effects from a kind of zero point and got it up and running to the point where we, I could tell the story that I wanted to tell, a space battle, fast moving. Uh, and get the point across, uh, just barely. A lot of it was done editorially, a lot of it was done sort of tricks, sleight of hand. But we had gone so far in realizing a concept of special effects of just moving spaceships. I mean, being able to pan with spaceships and be able to, to, to have a, a certain cinematic freedom in shooting those kinds of effects, uh, that had a very powerful impact on the t storytelling, a dramatic impact. It's just learning to use the medium more effectively. And the first film, we had maybe 20 colors to paint with, and this time we've had 40 colors to paint with. Well, it doesn't mean it's gonna be a better painting by any stretch of the imagination, but it does give the artist more area to roam around in and to advance that art and the technology to the point where we can express ourselves in special effects much more uh, articulately. onto the strongest power source. It should be the power generator. Great characters to motivate them. Star Wars has been rich in those from the beginning. How did we get into this mess? I really don't know how. We seem to be 